everybody. I hope this latest video finds you well. My name's Lee Foster Wilson and I'm an artist and illustrator from Cornwall in the UK. This month I thought it might be quite nice to give you a little studio update because it's been a while. Just show you what I've been working on, some musings I've had rolling around in my head, and what's been inspiring me lately. Kind of in the hopes that if you are feeling a bit stuck yourself or in need of some inspiration, um, or even how inspirations translate into artwork, then this might be of some use and help to you in that way. So seeing as this one is right behind me, let's start by having a little look at this latest canvas in the works. It's been a bit of a sporadic one, this one, mostly because of time. The Easter holidays fell not long after I started it and we actually took a break and went to London for a few days, which was really nice. We did a house swap with my cousin and her husband, so they came here for some Cornish sea air and we went there for some culture, which I came back from really refreshed by and I will touch again on that later when I talk about inspiration. Anyway, I haven't had a great deal of time to work on it, but I've been making a real effort to get an hour or so here and there this last week or so, because I have something that I want to apply to coming up. And for the first time ever, I'm going to be applying under my own name and not that of my brand, Bombay Forest. It's kind of scary, really. People know and have heard of Bombay Forest when I do events, and I'm not entirely sure my name is necessarily associated with it, even though all the Bombay Forest branding has my name on it as well. So the plan is to just show artwork and not any of the other bits and pieces that I sell for this particular event. Of course, I've plenty of art on hand, but not so much um, newer stuff or bigger pieces. So I'm getting a few bits together now in the hopes that by the time the event rolls around and if I'm accepted, of course, I'll have plenty more to show for it. There's nothing like a deadline to get my backside into gear. So this is where I'm at with this one. It's not far off being done, I don't think, and I'm hoping that when the finish draws in, I will just know and leave it alone and not overwork it. Um, and I'm sure I'll be able to share the finished article with you soon. I've also been busying away with my 100 day project and now at the time of recording, I'm on day 61, can you believe it? If you've been following my videos here, you will know that over the last year, I've been trying to shake up my work a little bit. I felt like when I looked at the work of other artists that I admired, there was a certain quality that it had in common that I just wasn't getting from my own work. I find it hard to even quantify what I mean, but I guess it just really came down to the fact that when I looked at the work I was making, I wasn't 100% proud of it and it wasn't the sort of work I wanted to be known for, which as an artist is just an awful place to be. It's hard to change things up when you've become quite established and I guess with having sold work and put work on the internet for the last 17 years I am quite established. <laughs> it's a bit like steering a big ship, it takes time to make a turn to another direction. So I have work that I made five years ago out in the wilds, licensed to various bits and pieces and being sold and loved and I'm so proud of that, I really am. And I could just keep making work in that vein. Um, but it would mean that in another five years, I should still be in the same boat of not being totally satisfied with my output. So it became time to make a change and slowly, but surely, I feel like the ship is turning. I've taken a few tangents over the last year, experimenting with new things, but since doing the 100 day project, I really feel like my work is hitting a groove that I'm really, really loving. It's a bit more painterly, a bit looser, more textural, less perfect at the edges, and there's a few more happy accidents happening. There's been a few misses and unhappy accidents, of course, pieces that I've made that I'm not totally happy with, but that's because of the experimenting. I'm bound to make mistakes. It's just the way it is. Questions like, will my audience like it? And will I start alienating people who like my older work? And will people get bored of this new way of working if I do it too much? Have all come to mind in recent weeks. But when I look back to it, I know that this is right. I love this new way of working and the results I've produced because of it. So I just have to be a bit braver and just really let it flow. 
I'm a firm believer that an audience can really feel when a piece has been made with joy and love and it's really important to keep that in mind. Some people have asked me where I get all of the ideas for the 100 day project from and is it hard to think of something new to draw every day and the honest answer is yes. <laughs> but our trip to London and specifically the Victoria and Albert Museum really freshen me up. We really only scratched the surface of that museum. My eyes and brain were just popping from being in the city, let alone all the wonderments of a museum as well. So we just went to the section that housed the Britain from the 1500s to the 1700s artefacts and decided to save the rest for other trips. But I found this section so inspiring. Everything was just so decorative and there was so much storytelling in each piece of cloth and furniture and ornament and ceramic. It was a feast of the eyes for sure. I took a few pictures, but when I got home, I found that there's a whole online archive of the v as permanent collection. I've taken a few screenshots, and these are some of my favourite bits and pieces that I've pulled from the collection. I have just loved poring over the way that people who were living four to five hundred years ago interpreted the world around them into these incredibly decorative pieces. It got me thinking about my own way of seeing the world and how as artists we actually interpret what we see into our work, especially if our work isn't hyper-realistic. How do we decide which bits of a flower to keep and which bits to stylize or discard, for example? Perhaps some of it has to do with whether we're concerned with having what we're drawing right in front of us or if we prefer to work from memory. Obviously, the people living hundreds of years ago either had to make sketches in the field or memorise how things looked, which would have influenced the way they rendered things. Some of the little faces are really weird, or the florals are incredibly over the top and dense and lush, and I love that. There's so many different elements all thrown together, and scale is sometimes weird too, and that really appealed as it's something that I've played with before in my own art. This fresh bit of visual delight got me thinking about where inspiration itself comes from and how we interpret it to create our own unique voice. And I think I'll do a more in-depth video about this soon. But I do think it comes initially from how we see the world. For example, I take a great inspiration from the natural world, which gives me lots of things to draw. But it is in how I want to express this on a page in my own voice that I often struggle for inspiration. I can walk through a lush garden in bloom, watch the birds at the feeders or listen to foxes barking at dusk and I know that I want to interpret these things and the wonder of the natural world, but how do I actually want it to look? With that in mind, I found looking to the past and thinking about why people made art back then really inspiring. Quite often it was to tell a story, to be decorative or to combine the two and it was when looking at the pieces from the V&A and being drawn in by the wonder of the craftsmanship and the richness of all the decoration that I found something that really struck a chord in me. It's hard to describe but if you've felt it you'll know it too. It's just like a flutter of excitement that keeps you thinking and that what you're experiencing is really something worth diving deeper into. So, bringing these ideas back to my own art, I've been playing around with being unapologetically decorative with these 100 days drawings. I know my work is quite decorative anyway, but it's a case of bringing even more to it, adding butterflies amongst the flowers and insects too, making it much richer and a little less binary by jumbling up colours a bit more and bringing a bit more of the fantastical to it. Referencing real life, but drawing from memory or my own sketches rather than having photographs in front of me, the way people used to in the past. I feel like I'm just getting started really, dipping my toe in here and there, as it all feels quite new and exciting and there's so much more to explore here, but this project is enabling me to do that little bit by little bit. I still have 39 days to go and I'm excited to see what they bring. Anyway, I've yet to decide what to do with all of these drawings at the end of the project. I'm thinking of having a sale of some sort or perhaps making a zine or a book. Suggestions are always welcome, so please do leave me a comment if you have any other ideas of what I might do with 100 drawings. Um, I'm learning all the time making these. I made a video about the first 30 days, so please do check that out. And do check out my shorts videos too, as each and every day is chronicled there as I draw them. So that's this latest studio dispatch. I hope you enjoyed it. I will see you soon. <laughs>